Hey guys, how are you doing? So today's video is a part of the 50 Rust project uh, playlist series. And in the previous video, we built a custom blockchain using Substrate, which is uh, a framework built with Rust, a framework that enables you to build your own custom blockchain. Now, if you've been following me on this channel for a while, you know that there's around a 43, 44 project Golang series also that I have in which we've built uh, blockchains. Right, so building blockchains is not a big thing, right? Uh, you can build a blockchain from scratch also very easily. The, the big thing that Substrate brings you is the ability to start multiple nodes and a complete network uh, at the same time, right? So just having a blockchain is not as useful because the blockchain needs to be replicated across multiple nodes. And that's what makes up the network because the whole network needs to come to consensus, then the new block is added to the network. So you have to have multiple nodes, right? For the multiple nodes, they all have to, uh, you have to run basically multiple nodes and all of them have to be connected to one network. And that's the basically uh, selling point of Substrate that it enables you to do that very easily. So it has the code to not only create your own blockchain, but it has all the no code relate, uh, required to create different nodes and all to bring them all to the uh, network. So what we want to do is we want to simulate a network in Substrate, right? So uh, we will be able to start a private blockchain network uh, with an authority set of private validators, right? Validators or nodes, almost the same thing. They basically, they uh, all come to a consensus to add new block and then some of them validate also. Now, uh, the Substrate node template uses an authority consensus model that limits block production to a rotating list of authorized accounts. So there will be a few validators who will be authorized and the uh, consensus model limits block production to only few of those and they all the the uh, authority basically goes between them uh, using a round robin fashion so round robin basically is an algorithm where uh, you know one by one basically they select so like let's say one guy gets to add a block and then the other gets to validate it then the other guy and the next guy gets to add a block then the other people validate it so uh, it's it's only for a closed set of private validators uh, that, that can, you know, join the network and then the authority basically is given to each of these in a round robin fashion, right? So this ensures that the same guy does not get to add the block every single time, which sometimes ends up happening with proof of stake, right? With proof of stake, with the Ethereum merge, with ha what's happening, where people are concerned is because one uh, of the stakers, right? The guy who has the maximum stake then can end up uh, like accessing most of the network and get, gets to win every single uh, time when, when the new block has to be added. So this kind of stops that from happening, round robin, right? Uh, and also, uh, it also means that not, not just anybody out of the blue can come and become a validator. So you have to have an authority set and you can set the rules. So we'll later on, we'll define how to set those rules as well. So you can set who can join the network. Now, uh, today we suppose we'll, we'll see how authority consensus works and we'll be able to produce blocks in a simulated environment and we'll be using two different nodes right they'll be started with two different accounts and keys but they will be run on a single machine so ideally ideally they're supposed to be done on different servers right but today on our just one machine we'll run these two nodes now needless to say uh, they were supposed to be run on different servers right different like a AWS servers or GCP servers, doesn't matter, different servers, two different servers. Uh, need, needless to say, this is going to require a lot of processing power on your system, it's going to also require a lot of space. So make sure you have both of them because I have plenty of space. Uh, it's a custom PC, right? I don't use like for these kind of uh, videos and these kind of, uh, you know, this kind of development, like any, anything related to Web3, like Solana, Substrate, uh, uh, Hyperledger, Cosmos, I never and never use a laptop. I always use a PC. Uh, so make sure you are on your PC, which can handle this kind of uh, problems because I tried it on a laptop once, uh, like I was traveling. So I tried Substrate on laptop once and it ended up taking like 5 GB, uh, you know, space for just one project, like crazy stuff happens, right? So make sure you're on a PC uh, just to be safe. And uh, if you've done this video, right? Uh, the, the basic requirement is, is that you should have done this video only then you'll be able to make sense of anything that's to happen today and and then obviously you'll have these project required to be able to build today's product project so make sure you have this already done and now what we'll do is we will uh, 
open a terminal shell it's telling us to open terminal shell so we'll do that and i'll just reduce this so i will cd into where i have my uh i think it's called substrate custom yeah in this i have my substrate node template this is what we created in the last tutorial the substrate node template this is what happens when you uh, git clone the substrate node template right you get this folder now i'm into that already make this smaller and what you want to do now is i will reduce the size of this all right let's push this here you need this uh, command so we'll do that it'll ask me yes or no i'll say yes it's basically going to purge the old data and uh, then i start the local blockchain using alice's account so it's going to uh, start the node template right with alice as the account on this port right and this rpc port and we'll also have telemetry data being sent to polkadot and we're starting this off as a validator so let's start it off and now uh, it will start off a node right we'll start off a node on my system so this one node i have started with alice right being alice now i want to start off another node being uh, okay so so you won't see these kind of images and icons right many times like at least in my case you'll see so these question marks because my pc doesn't have those kind of images available so yeah so basically it's started now with alice now i'm going to start another node right so two two different nodes on one single machine so i'm going to start off another node here right uh, i'll just clear this out sorry yeah so i'll again go to the same folder okay same folder and i'll clear this out and i'll do the same steps basically the same step being purging okay and i'll clear this again so that everything is clear to you guys purging is done and now it's given me the entire command for starting off another node as bob starting off the node template as bob on the same ports so that they both can connect to each other copy this paste it here start so i now have two nodes running at the same time two substrate nodes right and you'll see almost the same data on both of the nodes because they're both in touch with each other and that's proof that both of the nodes are working together to build blocks and they're you know coming to the consensus for adding new blocks and the project works perfectly fine with us so we didn't have to do much like we didn't use any rust we didn't like we didn't use any yeah you can say we didn't use any rust we just followed some steps on uh, on the on the on the documentation by the way this documentation is simulating a network in the substrate uh, documentation so you'll get the exact steps there but what this does for us is it kind of gives us the confidence of uh saying at least that we've you've started multiple nodes of substrate on our machine and this is a lot of that's a lot of confidence guys i mean uh if you, you've done that then you know at least you now have understanding of blockchains you have understanding of multiple nodes and how they interact with each other and it's just basically building up your knowledge uh for the actual real bigger projects that we'll do right so very in, in very small projects we're getting access and we're getting exposed to really big concepts right if you wanted exposure to these kind of concepts you would usually see a video more than three to four hours on parity text the, the the company which has made substrate you'll see videos for more than four three or four hours where, which are essentially explaining the same thing but but they take you through everything so it takes like three four hours because they get you to build a lot more but i want to give you a window into uh, those concepts but without too much complexity so that in like just 10 minutes uh, you have the confidence of 
doing something like this so that you get more encouraged to become a Rust developer. You know where you'll use your Rust knowledge uh, because essentially what you, let me stop this, right? And let me tell you what you'll be doing mostly as a, as a Rust developer. Let's say you get hired at a, at a really awesome startup or whatever. Uh, in, in case they're building their own blockchain with substrate, you'll, you'll be going very often, you'll be seeing this folder called runtime src lib rs. You'll be making a lot of changes here. You'll be making a lot of changes in the palettes folder, right? The lib src. So these two files are going to be like really, really important for you guys. And the, the code that we started right now, the node code is, is here, all the node code, right? Uh, so we'll be making a lot of changes in these files and we'll be adding more files here, obviously in the runtime and in, in SRC. So just want to tell you that uh, you have started a really big journey now. <laughs> and I'm happy that I was the one to get you started on the journey. And in the next videos now, we'll look at more different things for so. So this is again a part of the Rust uh, project playlist and this video and the previous video, they were not complicated. And I wanted this to be the case, right? No, not complicated videos, but still giving you a good, uh, you know, like a good insight into what we'll be doing in the future. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.